Okay, as we all know, when we have a factorial, such as 5 factorial, all we have to do is just 5 times 4 times 3 times 2 times 1. And we multiply that out, we get 120 for the answer, right? And in general, this is the usual definition of n factorial. And let me just write this down right here for you guys. When we have n factorial, all we have to do is just go ahead and do n times the next one, which is n minus 1, and then the next one, which is n minus 2, and so on, until we reach multiply by 2 and then multiply by 1, right? And this is the usual definition of n factorial. Unfortunately, this is only good for n is equal to 1, 2, 3, and so on, namely positive whole numbers n. And in fact, I cannot use this definition and tell you guys what 0 factorial is, nor half factorial, and things like that, right? But anyway, today, we'll see how we can extend the concept of factorial so that we can plug in more values into the factorial, right? Hmm. So, let's make some observation. And let me just put this down for you guys first. So, let me just write this down. When we have 1 factorial, we know this is 1. When we have 2 factorial, this is 2 times 1, which is 2. And when we have 3 factorial, we have 3 times 2 times 1, which is 6. And if you just make a quick graph, you see that, let's say this is 1, 2, 3, and this is 1, 2, and 6, right? And we can make a plot really real quick. This is 1, 1, 1, 2, and 3, 6, like this, right, in the factorial uh, situation. And I cannot connect the dots, because once again, this factorial business is only good for positive whole numbers at the moment. So ideally speaking, I do want to connect the dots with a smooth curve, so that we can talk about more, right? Maybe I can tell you guys what half factorial is right from there. Hmm. Alright, so this is one of the things that we want. So in order for us to extend the concept of a factorial, we want to have a function Alright, so let me just write this down for you guys. We want to have a function so that the first thing is, of course, when we plug in 1, the output is also equal to 1. So let me just say a function so that f of 1 is equal to 1. Right? This is like the most basic one. Right? Now, I also need to have a second property. Let's look at this again. As you can see, from here, n minus 1 times n minus 2, dot dot dot, times 2 times 1. This right here, in fact, I can write it down as, well, this is still n times, all this, I can merge them together into a factorial as well. I can put this down as n minus 1 factorial, isn't it? And now you see, if you begin with n factorial, what we can do is, you just multiply n with its previous factorial, that's altogether n factorial. So that's an important concept for the second property here. We want a function so that when I plug in n, right, when I plug in n, what I have to do is I will just have to write down n multiplied by the value of the function um, of the previous term, right? The value of the function when I plug in n minus 1. So that's exactly what this is. f of n is equal to n times its previous Right? And let me just leave it like this, right? And at the moment, we're just dealing with positive whole numbers. And some of you guys are about to tell me, I am going to talk about the gamma function, right? Yes and no. Because gamma function is not precisely n factorial when you plug in n into the gamma function. So let me show you guys this right here. A solution to a function that fits these two property is what we call the pi function, right? And this is done by Gauss. And you can uh, read more. I will have the link to the Wikipedia page on the, in the description. But anyway, let me introduce you guys the following, right? Pi function, and we will use capital pi for the name of this function. This is the capital pi. And let me just use the input x, right? So, I think some of you guys have done you know, differential equations, and over there, you guys study Laplace transform. Laplace transform is an integral, right? In fact, the pi function is also an integral. This right here is the integral going from 0 to infinity. And right here, we'll use a 
dummy variable, right? We use t for this, so I'll just put down t, and the power here is just equal to x, right? So that's the input, that's the x right here. And we have to multiply by e to the negative t, so this will make sure that things actually converges, right? dt. And <laughs> I know some of you guys relate to Yao, the gamma function. Yes, this and the gamma functions are closely related. The gamma function is that you have x minus 1 right here, right? But this right here is much better for the n factorial, right? I'll show you. So this is the definition of the pi function. And in this video, I will just show you guys these two properties, OK? So here we go. I will just tell you guys, let's go ahead and check the first property. Namely, I will have to plug in 1 into x so that I shall end, so end up with 1, right? So I will check pi of 1. I'm not using f because we know a specific name for this function, which is pi. So anyway, 1, that's the input, it's going to be right here. This is the improper integral going from 0 to infinity, and we have t raised to the first power like this, and then we have e to the negative t dt. Ah, this is your cal 2 life all over again. Why? Because we have to integrate this by parts, and of course we can do it by the di setup, right? So let's do it real, real quick. So I'm just going to put on the d and the i, plus, minus. I'm going to differentiate t and then integrate e to the negative t. And if you differentiate t, you get 1, and if you integrate this, you get negative e to the negative t. And in fact, let me just do it one more row, because when I differentiate 1, I get 0, differentiate this, I get e to the negative t, right? Be sure you have the signs correctly. And this is all I need for the answer part of the integration, because I have the product of the diagonals, and I see 0 in the d column, so I can stop. Anyway, so in terms of the antiderivative of this, it's going to be positive t times negative e to the negative t. So let me just put it down as negative t, e to the negative t, right? And next, I have this times that, namely negative e to the negative t. And you can see that why we stop when we have a 0 in the d column, because the next row is just going to be a bunch of zeros. And remember, a product of a row is also an integral, so this times this is 0, it doesn't really matter. But anyway, this is the antiderivative for this, but I still have to evaluate this guy from 0 to infinity. And here we have a small trouble, because when I plug in infinity into here, this is t going to infinity. As you can see right here, we will have negative infinity times e to the negative infinity, right? Well, e to the negative infinity is 0, so this is going to be a negative infinity times 0 situation. So technically, I have to show you guys by the Laputal's rule. So I will just do it real quick right here, all right? So if I plug in, if I take the limit technically, take the limit as t goes to infinity of this part, because that's all it matters, right? That's the most complicated one in this case. Uh, let me just write this down as negative t on the top, and I'll bring this down in the denominator like this, e to the negative, well, e to the positive t now, because negative exponent goes down, becomes the positive exponent. Right here, what we can do is just the L'Hopital's rule, so when I do d, dt, d, dt, on the top, we'll still have to write down the limit as t goes to infinity. On the top, it's going to be negative 1. On the bottom, this is just e to the t, right? And now when you plug infinity into here, you get negative 1 over a real big infinity. is 0. Anyway, this right here, let's see. When I plug in infinity into here, this term is 0. When I plug in infinity into here, we have minus e to the negative infinity. It's also going to give us 0. Don't matter, right? And then plug in 0 into here, so minus. Well, I should make this in red, because I like that right here. Plug in 0 into here, you get negative 0 times e to the negative 0, and then minus e to the negative 0, like this. OK, this is 0, this is 0, so all that is 0. Minus, this is 0, and this is 0, but e to the 0 is 1, so it's negative 1. But anyway, in the end, we see that we have 1. OK? so. Uh, the first property checks. Now, 
Moving on to the second property, what we want is, I want to have this, right? This is like a reiteration because your input right here and then you multiply by the previous value of the function. So what I want to do is I will write this down, f of n. In this case, it is pi of n. In this case, it's just this guy. So let me just write this down, pi of n, which is the integral from 0 to infinity, t to the nth power times e to the negative t dt, right? And it's really similar to what we just did. We have to use integration by parts. This time, you will see a really uh, you know, cool things. I will just say, go ahead and do the di method, right? So I'm going to just differentiate t to the nth power and integrate e to the negative t. I will just do it one time, n t n minus 1. This is negative e to the negative t. And you will see, this is going to be, well, the product of the diagonals, right? So this times that is negative t to the n e to the negative t. And then remember, the product of each row is still integral. So this times this, negative times negative is positive, and then integral. Let me write down the n, t, n minus 1, and then e to the negative t, like this, dt. And remember, this integral was going from 0 to infinity. This is the first part of the answer already for the integral, so be sure you evaluate this from 0 to infinity. And right here, be sure you're still plugging 0 and infinity right here. Now, this part, when I plug infinity into this, <laughs> yes, I have to do this kind of things again. But I will just show you guys this uh, real, real quick, right? So when I take the limit as t goes to infinity, this part is negative t to the n over e to the plus t. You know I have to do the Laplace rule. But in this case, the power right here is n. Well, if I just do Laplace rule one time, it's not enough. But <laughs> you just have to do it as many times as you need to because when you differentiate this, eventually you end up with just a constant, right? And on the bottom here, you know e to the t never dies when you differentiate that. So eventually, you will get like a negative n factorial on the top, all right? So let me just write this down. After you differentiate this n times, use Laplace rule n times. On the top, you get, well, I don't mean to use the thing n factorial, but you know the idea. It's negative n factorial over still e to the t, and then plug infinity, you get 0, all right? So I'll write this down, Laplace rule n times, OK? Anyway, let's see. Let me just draw a line like this. OK, so when I plug infinity into here, the first part is the 0 in blue. And then when I plug in 0 into here, you know that it's going to be the 0 in red, just like you know, how we did it earlier. So I'll plug in, uh, put down 0. So this part, it's going to be 0. Now, what's this? This is the interesting part. Let me put down the plus. And this right here, we are in the t world. n is just like a constant, so I can bring that to the front. So let me write down n right here. And then integral from 0 to infinity. And then we have the t right here. And this right here is n minus 1. And let me use the you know, ref for this part, right? Because that's actually my input for the pi function. So I'll put down n minus 1. And this right here states the same, e to the negative t, dt. Zero doesn't bother you, all right? So now you see, we have the n right here, times this part. It's exactly when you plug in n minus 1 into this x, right? That's the input for the pi function. So I can write this down as pi. This is the capital pi. So it's the name of the function. It's not 3.14, right? But anyway, I will just have to plug in n minus 1, right? And as you can see, this is exactly what we want from the second property. So in the end, I will put on the box right here and shade in. You know, as a math person, that box means a lot to us, right? So anyway, you see that when we have this function, pi of x, we can actually conclude that pi of n Okay, pi of n is equal to 
just n factorial pretty much. Right? This is just equal to n factorial. Right? Because you see, when I plug in n into the pi function, what I get is okay, the input. So if you want to see that this is the input n, and then multiply by the next multiply by uh, the next term factorial. This is exact n minus one put the plug into function. It's, it's like that. And this is much better than the gamma function because you get precisely pi of n is equal to n factorial. Of course, since I mentioned about the gamma function, how can I leave that out, right? So I'll just give you guys this real quick. So another way to take care of the n factorial, if you want to extend the concept of the factorial, you can use the gamma function. So I will just write this down real quick, but yeah, this is the gamma function. And the gamma looks like this, right? We are not playing hangman. Right? This is not the situation you can draw the hangman. No, 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 no. This is the gamma, okay? This is the capital letter of gamma. And then the input, let's say I use x again. This right here is the integral from 0 to infinity. t, but we will have x minus 1, okay? and then e to the negative t dt. And if you do talk about the gamma function, this is not precisely factorial, right? If you plug in n, I'll just write this down. Gamma of n is equal to, in fact, n minus 1 factorial. Why? You can blink on the minus 1, right? So I think the pi function is cooler. And because I just showed you guys, hey, I could use this as an extension for the factorial, right? So right here, if you would like, you can put down x factorial. Now, let me just put this down right here. This is like the bonus part. Notice the following. If you want to talk about zeros factorial, I can just plug in zero into this x right here, right? So I will just tell you, hey, zero factorial is the same as a pi of zero and Pi of 0 is just plugging 0 into here. That's the integral from 0 to infinity t to the zeroth power e to the negative t dt. And seriously, I will leave this to you guys because I run out of space. Okay? I run out of space. So be sure you just work this out. And you end up with 1. Alright? So this is one little thing I can tell you guys before we go. And you can definitely watch my next video because I will show you guys some fractional factorial, such as the half factorial. Uh, things like that. But anyway, hopefully you guys like this. And as always, that's it.